mercy endures forever. Amen. 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 Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm just excited to be in the house of prayer. I'm excited to be in the position where we are gathering corporately to come in. Even though our corporate gathering is remote, it's, it's digital, we are coming together in, in one posture, in one place to give God the glory, to give him the praise. Can we just, just for a moment, right where you are, amen, can we just give God the glory? Hallelujah. 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 If you don't mind, put your coffee down. If you, if you don't mind, put your Danish down. Hallelujah. Give God the glory. Hallelujah. You ain't got to wake nobody up, just, but just into yourself. Say, God, I love you. God, I bless you. God, I adore you and I magnify you. There is absolutely nobody like you. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor, what, 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 where's your basis for this? Why, why, why you got us doing this? The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know what? Listen. Uh, uh, if you can yell and scream at the TV with the sons and the bucks, then you can give God some glory and some praise because of what he's done for you already. Hallelujah. And if, and if, you, if you don't mind praising him on credit or praising him in advance, praise him for what is about to manifest in your life. Hallelujah. Praise him for what time has finally caught up with in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Amen. Amen. You know, God reminded me something years and years and years ago as a young, young preacher, young pastor. I, I remember the first church I pastored. And there were times, there were times as we stood and we told and we told, said what God said. Uh, some folk didn't like it and they, they wouldn't come to church. Uh, and, and for a minute, it bothered me for a minute. But the, I remember one day it was me and my beautiful wife. We were sitting, we were the only ones in the building. And I said, well, Lord, what are we going to do? And in this, inside my spirit, the Holy Spirit said, preach! He was teaching me how to preach in a pandemic before it came. I just, it was just me and my wife. It was just me. And I mean, it was, it was, it was no special occasion. You know, sometimes you say holidays, take people away. It was just a regular Sunday. They, just, they was just mad because I stood flat-footed and told the truth. And my grandmother said, hurt dog, a holler. And so it was just me. And I said, God, I, said, I, I started getting down. I'm gonna say, I, ain't gonna, I started getting, I said, what are we going to do? And Holy Spirit inside me said, preach. He said, I need you to preach and teach to the people you want to see. <laughs> Some of y'all are going to get that. I need you to teach and preach to the people you want to see. So every time I stand here, I'm preaching to a room full of folk. Matter of fact, I'm preaching to a room bigger than the room I'm in right now. You hear what I'm saying? Somebody gonna catch that. I'm pre I'm pre I, for, for those who hadn't even come to the room yet, I've been preaching to you for years. I've been preaching because I've seen you. And it's just a matter for time to catch up with purpose. And I just want you to know right now that God, God, He said He inhabits the praises of His people. So if you ever want God to show up, don't complain. Praise. That that sound for Pastor. I thought he's concerned. He moves quicker to praise. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. The Bible says he, he watches over, or King James says he hastens over his word. Jeremiah 1, 12. He hastens over his word to perform it. God, will, he'll show up quicker when you start calling his word. Thank you for that one hand clap. He'll show, he hastens. He hastens to his word to perform it. So you want, you want God to show up, praise him, and then begin to recite his word and watch him show up. Amen, amen, amen. Father God, we thank you, we love you, we bless your name. You are worthy to be praised. You're greater than all that there ever has been or there ever will be. Hallelujah. That means we, can't, we can't compare you to anything we know of. Hallelujah. You are in a class all by yourself. In the name of Jesus, we come before you now. Desiring, oh God, your, your impartation, 
desiring, oh God, manifestation, that you show yourself strong to us in a new and a living way. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Can we just put a little bit more praise on that? Just come on, just, 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 let's put a praise sandwich, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Yes, God, for the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let's get back into the habit. I want to just, we're going to get back into the habit. Just look to your left or your right. You ain't got to touch nobody. Just, just give them the peace sign and say, neighbor, it doesn't matter how you feel. God is worthy of all your praise. Amen. 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 Give God some glory. Amen. We're going to do our Bible affirmation. Should be on our screen, our Bible affirmation, we believe the word of God. Hallelujah. It is not just some book that has been bound together to collect dust on our mantles or on our coffee tables or in our back seats. It is a book that God intended for us to live by. It is a book that God intended for us to obey and to hide its contents into our heart. Scripture says, that word have I hid in my heart. There it is that I might not sin against it. Hallelujah. 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 You want to sin-proof your life, get some word in. Put some word in. Put some word in. Father God, let's do our, let's do our, our, our Bible affirmation. Ready? Go. This is my Bible. It is the infallible, incorruptible, unstoppable, immutable word of God. It holds my peace. Amen. You believe that? Give God a shout. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to be coming uh, primarily from uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 6, the sixth chapter of the book of Matthew. So we're primarily going to come. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're going to get there, but we've got a couple of other scriptures to, to cut, through, cut through before we get to that place. Uh, <clears throat> we're still talking. This is uh, message 8. In this series, confidence that brings rest, and we're still talking about prayer's purpose. We're still talking about prayer's purpose, the purpose of prayer. Again, with the confidence is confidence in God's ability. And if we don't have confidence in God's ability, then we're not going to rest in the finished works of Christ. If we're not there are, uh, people will, I'm not denying that you, that you believe God, but sometimes we can be challenged to believe his promises for us. We believe God will do, but if you've been hit long enough, if you've been, been under pressure, sometimes the attack of the enemy will cause us to doubt whether or not he will do it for us. And that lack of confidence disturbs our ability or hinders our ability to rest, to fully lay out on the finished works of Jesus, what he's already done. Then, When that happens, we're, we begin looking for stuff that has already taken place. We begin looking for things that we already possess. We begin, and we begin to, to believe the, uh, the erroneous... The, I hate to say it. Yeah, but it is what it is. The erroneous understanding that God's getting ready to do. I cringe when I hear my brothers in the face say that God's not getting ready to do nothing. He's already done it. But if, 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 our, if our confidence has been shaken, we won't rest in the fact that he's already finished all of the things we're still looking for. That's what Jesus said. It is finished. We have to have the confidence in, in God's ability that we may, if we don't see it today, know that, that because it's finished, it's on the way. Oh, to have the confidence to know that my God, if, if Jesus said it was finished, 
Just because I don't see it today doesn't mean it's not finished. And so, so, so one of the aspects, the approaches to this confidence that brings rest is prayer's purpose. This prayer has a part to play in us, in us walking confidently in what Christ has already done. And so we've been here for a while now uh, because this is so important. If, if the believer has a, has a difficulty praying and communicating to God, then their effectiveness in, in, in this moment is going to be hindered. Because it's through, our, through the activity of prayer that not only do we get, do we get direction from God, but we, we, we get fellowship with God. It's through prayer that we get uh, 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 instruction and guidance through the Holy Ghost. And we need that because this world is dark. Because the Bible says our very deeds are dark and evil, and we need the light of God, and it is revealed, it is revealed in its purest form when we, when we articulate the heart of God correctly. Prayer has a purpose. So, so we're going to get right into it. To effectively petition, and, and we, we're, going to, we're using petition uh, uh, over prayer because prayer, is, what we consider prayer is really more more petition than, 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 the religious, than the religious phrasing that we have given. But to effectively petition, it requires citizenship. You can't petition a government you're not a citizen of. You can't petition a, 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 a law that, that, that you're, not, you're not subject to. Oh. The Word of God contain the legal promises made to every citizen of the kingdom of heaven. This is a, this, it's called the law of God. It's called, this is the law book of the, of the kingdom of heaven. And the citizens of heaven use this book, use this, and, 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 and find the legal promises that have been made to them and, and, and form their petitions thereby. Putting a demand on these legal promises is called petitioning or praying. So right out the bat, let me just jump to the, if you want to jump to the, jump to the chase. If you're not praying, if, if, if when you pray and you're not using any of God's word, it's probably not prayer. Pause for effect. If in your prayer, in what you call prayer, and there's, there's no articulation or alluding or reference to the Word of God, the law of God, that prayer may leave the room, but it's coming right back down. He says in Jeremiah, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm jumping way ahead. Jeremiah 1 12, I hasten to my word to perform it. And one translation says, he says, he says, I, I, I listen for my word to perform it. He's listening for his word to perform that. Not your emotional outbursts, not, not our, not our, our, our philosophical renderings. He says he's listening for his word to perform it. So if our prayer is a bunch of hopes and wishes, that's not prayer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I done lost about 40 people, Chris. <laughs> See, it's not, it's not an emotional transaction when we pray. It's not an emotional transaction. It's a legal transaction. Prayer is a legal transaction. God's, the same way your, 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 your child's kicking and screaming when they're two and three and one don't move you. It might get them legs spanked. If you won't take that from your child, how do you think God's going to take that from you, his, chill, his child. Your, our, emotional, our emotional outbursts 
is not prayer. What we, what we know is in the book concerning us, the promises, the privileges, the rights, that is what is translated. That is what God hastens to. So it looks like we need to get into the Word. Hallelujah. The Word of God is the material citizens of the kingdom of heaven use to make effective legal petitions. This Word, the Bible, is what we use to make effective legal petitions. It's what we use as our, as our, as our substance in prayer. Y'all getting that? Hallelujah. We cannot petition God for things he never promised us. You can't ask him for stuff he ain't never promised. We used to try to get over my grandfather. He said he'd go into the store. He'd get us something. But he, he, there'd be times he'd say he wouldn't get us nothing. And he'd come back. You said you was going to get us something. He said, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. He called my grandmother Peach. Peach, did I say I was going to get them some? Show sure didn't, Ike. His name was Isaiah. He called, she called him Ike. Show sure didn't, Ike. They, try, they trying to play you, Ike. God, God is not, he's, he's not, we can't petition God for things he never promised us. Neither can we petition him for things we forgot or don't know he promised us. See, if you don't know he promised it to you, you're not going to ask. If you forgot he promised it to you, you're going to forget to ask. This is why we have to study to show ourselves approved. <sighs> study to show yourself. Uh, he's a workman need not be ashamed. If you work in this word, you ain't got to be ashamed of it. If you work in this word, you don't have to be ashamed if somebody try to challenge you. No, I know this word. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So God's not, you, you can't petition him for stuff he didn't, he didn't promise you. And if you don't know what he promised you, then, then you, you, you're not going to know what to ask for. Look at somebody say, read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Quit being emotional. Read your Bible. See, I, I've, been read, I've been reading Proverbs every week since I was 17. I read a proverb a day. I try to read it. Now, I, don't, I used to be dogmatic and try to read the whole chapter. I can't get, sometimes I can barely get through three verses. But for, since I was 17, I don't know, I don't know what it was. it was. It was God before I knew him that way. But I, I okay, I'm going to be honest with you. Don't tell nobody. I read Song of Solomon, and I saw how he was talking to his women. And since he had 700 of them, I figured he was doing skill. I believe, I figured, can I, can I be honest with y'all? I figured this game was tight. I'm just, y'all pray for me, Father, in the name of Jesus. I, but when I was young, I figured, listen, he got 700 wide, 300 concubines. The brother's saying something. He knows something. So I started looking in, in the book. I, look, I start looking in the Song of Solomon, and when the, then I said, well, he wrote Song of Solomon, and then I see he wrote Proverbs, then it must be something in Proverbs too. I'm trying to get my Mac on. I, was, I, I began to recognize, okay, that's something into it, so I started reading it. I started reading it at 17. I've been reading it every day since I was 17, and, and this past week, I found something. I found a promise I hadn't, I hadn't seen since 17 to now, I was in, I was in chapter, seven, verse two, is chapter 7, verse 2, and I found that promise. I said, where has this promise been? It's, and I'm talking rhetorically. It's been there, but I hadn't, I, I hadn't seen it until this past week, which says if you keep reading the Word of God, He's going to show you something new. It's because it's a living Word. Because it's a living word. You, you may have seen and read that text before, but because you're in a different space spiritually. Because, you're, because there's, there's been some level of maturity to you, you're going to see it differently. It's going to hit different. But you're not going to see that if you abandon the book. 
got to get in there. I've been doing this since I was 17, and I'm, I'm, I'm continuing to see things new. That, 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 this, this, that, that's a glimpse of what the angels are, 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 are seeing, uh, those who fly around the throne of God. The Bible says they say day and night. They've been saying it eternally, holy, holy, holy. They're seeing it with excitement because they're seeing another side of him they've never seen. When you read the word of God and you read it intent on, on fight, God, what are your promises toward me? And if you seek him earnestly, he will show you. Now, now Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1, verse 12, he says, <clears throat> the Bible says, I watch over my word to perform it. King James says he hastens over his word. He watches over his word to perform it. In, uh, in, 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 in other words, God, God has, if you think about it like this, Computer technology, they, they, have, they create programs, they call them algorithms. And they can design it to where it searches or it looks for certain, certain keystrokes or certain phrases. And you can find different things and, and based on what, it, what they program it to search and to find along that algorithm, it'll pick, it'll pick those out wherever, it, wherever they are. He says, he says, I'm watching over my word. I'm hastening over my word to perform it. God, it's like God has performed an algorithm. So whenever you say his word, oh, there it is. Oh, Brian just said something about me. Oh, Chris, Chris, just, Chris just quoted one of my, one of my words. He's, he's, his, his ears are tuned to his word. Like like a CB. Yes, see, y'all don't know about it. Y'all know about CBs. CBs. See, we used to do. We used, my grandfather wrote, drove a truck. He had CBs, and you got even your even your uh, walkie talkies. You set them to frequencies, and they pick up everything on that frequency. God has a frequency called His Word, and He set the frequency. And when you begin to pray His Word, He hears His Word, and He says, "Oh, I can do that. I can do that." He listens and watches over his word to perform it. He, listen, he watches over his word to perform it, which means if you're praying his word in line with his will, he says, I am going to perform it. Oh, my God. But if, you get, if you're just giving him emotion and slobbering and crying... His, his frequency isn't set for that. Does that mean God doesn't care? No, his heart breaks because he's saying, he say, I'm giving you the, I'm, tell, I'm showing you how to get to me. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give you the algorithm to use, but, you, but you're too emotional. And it, it, it breaks his heart, but he's not going to violate his word. In our country, there are certain words when spoken in sequence or conjunction with other words or phrases will get you a visit from any one of the alphabet agencies. If you say certain things in certain contexts and string them together in certain phrases, you can expect a visit from any, of the, any one of the alphabet agencies. Because there's an algorithm. They're listening for they're listening for, in, 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 the, in the name of homeland security, in the name of security. Listening to see are, are there people planning to perform certain acts that would be considered obtrusive to the government? God has set an algorithm, He set a frequency to His word. And he's listening for his word. He's listening for his word. There are times at work, you know, I tune out. So I'm, I'm in, in, a, in a female-dominated uh, uh, profession. So there's some things they talk about. It just don't. Buy, it just don't interest me. I'm not interested in camisoles. I'm not interested in in the latest fabric. I'm not this. I'm not interested. I'm just. I'm sorry. I'm not interested in that. It's not. I, it's just not me. But I got a frequency. I'm say, they say, hey, you all right, Jesse? I say, I'm just listening for my name. Just listen. Anything else? I just put it out. 
God has a frequency that's set to his word. And when you declare his word in prayer, in petition, he hears that word. He says he's, he's watching over his word, not just to say, oh, Chris prayed. She, 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 she's quoted my scripture. He's watching over his word to perform it. We're wondering why God won't move. He said, you won't speak. God, why aren't you why aren't you doing it? Why aren't you answering my prayer? He said, because you, you, you're not lining up with, with, with the structure. He's watching over his word to perform it. God, God doesn't watch over our emotional outbursts. He watches over his word. So if our petition does not include a or not, does not include or reference his word, God is not obligated to do anything. He's not. He's not obligated to do anything. The same way. Listen, come on now. Why? 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 Why we? Why we want to put? Why we want to get brand new? Why we want to get brand new? If if I if your children, if you talk to your children and say please and thank you, and they don't. In my house, we don't respond. We don't. We just it give me it's silence. Please and thank you is what sets things in motion. He says he's watching over his word to perform it. Let's look at 1 John. Look at 1 John. Look at 1 John. Look at 1 John. Okay, okay. I got to hasten to this point. There's, there's, a, there's a shouting point here. I got I to lay this down. Uh, 1 John 5, 14, and 15. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, 15. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his, his word, one word says his will, he hears us. Here's the confidence. If we ask anything according to his word, he hears us. You want to make sure God hears your prayer? Come out of here. Come out of here. Base, base it out of here. God, you say it. God, your word says. God, it is written in. He says we have this confidence. We, we can be certain, we can be sure of this, that if we, if we ask anything according to his will or his word, he hears us. Look at verse 15. And if we know that he hears us, Whatever we ask, ah, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. This right here tells you, you pray my word in line with my will. You can be confident that I hear you and what you petition, you're going to get it. His word in conjunction with his will. Because what, 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 what does that really say? His word in its proper timing. Because I pray some things according to his word, and he's talking, this, it, yes, but not yet. Yes, but not yet. That's yours, but you're not ready for it. Mm -hmm. It's yours. My grandfather bought me a watch. I wanted me a watch for my birthday. He bought me a watch. He bought me a watch, but I couldn't tell time. <laughs> and it wasn't, it wasn't a digital watch. It was a Timex watch with the hands. And, 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 and I, I lied to him and told him I could tell time. And when he, he said, put it, he gave it to me. I'm excited. I rip it. I put it on. He said, he said, tell me what time it is. And I looked at the digital clock. And he saw what I did. And he said, no, no. Look at your watch. And I looked, and I looked as if the watch was going to tell me <laughs> what time it was. And when he found out that I couldn't tell time, he says, that's okay. Give me the watch. When you tell time, and he put it on top of the digital clock. He said, he said it's yours when you're ready for it. Meaning, it's yours 
when you can use it properly. We can have this confidence that when we, when we, whatever we ask in accordance to his will, he hears us. And if we ask, and if we ask, verse 15, and if we ask, we, if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have asked of him. When I ask according to his word, when I pray a prayer that is, that is word-based and is in line with his will and his timing for me to have it, I know I can have it. So, Pastor, let me, ask, let me answer the question for the people who say, well, Pastor, I did pray his word. I prayed his word. I believed in faith. He says, in his will. The stuff, the stuff he said, it's yours. You just, if I gave it to you now, you, you'd kill yourself with it. Or you'd hurt somebody else with it. If I gave it to you now, Sydney, Sydney is going to inherit her brother's car. She already knows it. But she can't drive. It would be foolish for me to give her the car today. She's going to hurt herself and somebody else if she tried to drive that car. It, has been, it, is, it, is, it is my will to give her the car. She already knows the car is hers. And the car works. <laughs> but if she's not mature enough for the gift... It becomes, it becomes a weapon. It becomes something that is more damaging than it is a blessing. God says, Yo, when you pray my word, you can, know, you can know, you can be confident that's a promise for you. But you also have to be mature enough to receive the promise. Oh, I'm talking to somebody right now. God, listen, you have a desire to be married. God wants you to be married. But if you're still selfish and you're not willing to be, you, you're not willing to, 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 to be one with somebody else, God said, you're not ready yet. I lost about 30 people, Chris. Ratings are dropping. He says, he says, we can have this confidence. That, that widow woman, that widow woman in Luke chapter 18, and I'm almost she she didn't care who, who was on the bench. When she went and made her request, neither was she intimidated by her own low social standing because a widow during this time was on the low, was on the low rung of society. They had nobody to take care of them, and there was no welfare or social assistance at that time. They were left to be beggars, but she was still a citizen of that country. She didn't let the fact that, that there was a hateful man on the bench, nor did she, nor did she let the fact that her, her social standing was low. She understood her rights as a citizen, and she demanded her rights. Knowledge is power. Because when we know what we have a right to as kingdom of, citizens, as kingdom of heaven citizens, anybody's low opinion of me can't cancel what my constitution says I have a right to. I got a right to every promise and every, 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 every privilege in this book. Doesn't matter where you are. Quickly, quickly, in my, in my last few moments, my last few moments, M M Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6. We're getting ready to get into this framework right now and break it down. Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6. The framework, Matthew chapter 6, look at 9, verse 9 and 11. In this manner, therefore, Jesus is saying, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, we're going to break this framework down into individual elements. 
for greater clarity. There are 15 elements in total. Today, we're only going to deal with three. And we're going to load up our little red wagon and get out of your way. First element is our Father. And we've talked about our Father. Second element is in heaven, which art in heaven. The third element is hallowed be your name. Element four, thy kingdom. Element five, come on earth. Element six, as it is in heaven. Element seven, give us this day. Element eight, our daily bread. Element nine, forgive us. Element 10, as we forgive those. Element 11, that trespass. Element 12, against us. Element 13, lead us not into temptation. Element 14, deliver us from evil or the evil one. And element 15, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We're only going to deal with three elements this morning. Our Father, we talked about that. Our, bring more than yourself. It's it's inclusive. Consider more than your needs. Make sure that our petition represents all the citizens. Our, our. As we were set in the atmosphere, I was praying not, I was praying over, over this atmosphere, over, over our time together. And I began to, as I began to pray for our time together, I began to pray for other churches' time together, other houses of prayer. I began to pray for other pastors and, and other worship teams. I began to pray. As I prayed for hours, I, pr- I, I included the rest of the citizenship. Our means it's inclusive. Don't just pray, pray, pray we, not me. It says, it says we're, we're, coming, we're coming on behalf of the community of faith. When you pray, it ain't just you. You're coming on behalf of the community of faith. Father. A father is not a name. It's a function. It's a function. It's not a name. It's a function. Father in, in, the, in the Hebrew means Abba. It's translated Abba. In Greek, it's pater, where you get paternity. Abba, pater. And they both mean, get this, they both mean source. Source. Sustainer. Supplier. So when he says Abba, he says our father. He he says our source. Our sustainer our supplier. See, when we petition God, we have to see him as our source. We can't see him as as an earthly father because the enemy has perverted some of our understanding of earthly fathers. We can't we can't stay re- we can't stay religious and just see him as an earthly as a father figure. He is our source, our sustainer, our supplier. Every substance and resource comes out of him. When we when we petition, we have to see that 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 anything that 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 I need, everything that I need, it comes from one place, Abba. See, in the king, in a kingdom, the king owns everything. The king, he's he's sovereign. He owns. He owns. It's okay. You've been tilling the land, but it's, it's his land. You got children, but guess what? He can bring them. He can bring them into service whenever he wants to. Everything in a kingdom belongs to the king. This means that there's nothing that we can ask that the king can't supply. (laughs) Did you get that? There's nothing in the kingdom of heaven that we can ask that the king can't supply. You got to be confident, but you got to be confident in that. God, I know you got it. 
I know you got it because you're the king of kings. You're the Lord of lords. I know you have it. Somebody say our father. Uh, Our, he says, our is community. Father is source. He's our community source. Our father, he, he supplies all of us. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Our Father. That's element one. Now, now the next element builds off of the first one, and, and here it goes. The ele- element number two, it talks, it, it tells us the location of our source. Our Father, which art in heaven. Now, when Jesus is given the framework, he says, he says, he says, he, he's your source, know where he's located. He's in heaven. Who art in heaven, that this element informs us uh, where our source is located. And I need you to understand this. He is not on earth. It's important to understand that. He is not on earth. In other words, our source and supply isn't limited to earth or limited by earth, earthly confines. He's outside of the earth. He's not, he's not limited to that. That's what, ah, God, that's why he gives us dominion. Because even though we have dominion here, it, it's, only, it's only confined to here. If he had come, he'd have been confined just to this, but he's over all of it. So he's, he's letting you know your source is not limited by the things that limit you. Oh, my God. Specifically, if what we ask for can't be found or doesn't exist on earth, God can make it in heaven. Pastor, you're going to have to help me. He says, the things that are seen were not made with things that that we see, but they were made with things that are invisible. The invisible is more real than, than what you see, than what we call real. For everything that was made was made from something that wasn't. God is not. He said, if it doesn't exist in the earth, he says, I can get it. If it doesn't exist on the earth, I I can handle that. Our source is not on earth. Therefore, he cannot be limited no matter how big the petition. The Bible says, he says, he says, he he says the earth is his footstool. (laughs) The earth is the place where he prop his foot. The Bible says he measured the universe. That's not just the earth. That's, That's the solar system and the other galaxies we know and don't know. He measured the universe with the span of his hand. The universe fits between his thumb and his finger, his, his, his index finger. You serve a big God. And your petition does not stress him out. Your request does not stress him out at all. Our source is not on earth. Therefore, he cannot be limited no matter how, how big the petition. Listen, in Psalm, how, Pastor, uh, how you, what, 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 where can you say that? In Psalm chapter 2, verse 8, God says, Ask me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. He said, I'll give you nations. God can offer this because it belongs to him. He can offer this. Because, what do you mean, Pastor? It belongs to him. Okay. Psalm 24, 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth and they that dwell therein. He's bigger. He's bigger than your greatest imagination. When we petition, we're not talking to someone who can't deliver. That's what he's saying. Our Father. Our source, who art in heaven, who's who's separated from any of your limitations, who doesn't experience, doesn't know what it's like to be limited like you. 
He's your source is outside of, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Your source, our source, is outside of our need. Which means he's not affected by it. Which means he can deliver whatever is necessary to meet it. And element number three, this is hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed means holy. Holy means pure. Perfect, different, or distinct. Holiness is not a fashion choice. It's a deliberate tendency. Holiness is not how long your dress is. Holiness is not how much or how little makeup you put on. It's not a fashion choice. It's a deliberate tendency. What you consistently do the lifestyle you consistently live. It's a deliberate tendency. Holiness defines itself when our standards are distinctively different from everyone else's. It's holiness. It's holiness. You can wear wear your long dresses and still go around the corner and pull them up. I know It's what we, it's what we, it's the standard that we, that we distinct, that we continually and deliberately uphold that makes us distinctively different from everyone else. So when we bring our petition to God, recognize we're coming into the presence of one unlike anything or anyone we've ever encountered. He's distinct. He's different. He's pure. He's holy. He's like no, no one else we've ever known. So you can't come to God thinking, oh, he's going to be like Jeff. My name is Jeff. You can't come to him thinking that he's, he's just like the person you just had a conversation with. Was it Birdman that said, put some, put some respect on my name? When we come to God in prayer and make our petition, we have, to put, we have to put some respect on his name because he's holy. Because he's holy. Because he's holy. God is in a class and a distinction all by himself. And that means he can't be compared to anyone else. Hallowed or holy be thy name. Now, that word name, <laughs> that word name, it means it's, it's, more, than just, it's more than just a title. It's, it's, it, it, mean, it literally means being, B-E-I-N-G. It literally means being in Hebrew. Holy is your being. It's not, holy is not something you do. It's who you are. Holy is your name or your being. It's the character, the quality, and the essence of a thing. It's the being. It's, that's why God take, puts so much stock in names in the Bible. Because names meant more than just, than just something you thought was cute. See, we name, we name our kids after at, at, at the good drink we had. Cavassier. Cavassier Shante Jenkins. We name our kids, we, 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 listen, we name our kids based on how we feel. But, but God says a name, it, 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 it determines and it dictates your being, your character, your essence, the quality. And many of us, we give these names because they sound good or they're unique. But God, he said, no, no, this is, he says, holy is your character, your essence, your being. That's what, that's what God is saying. He says, our God, he is, his very nature, his very character is holy. He don't take off that robe when he's done with you. Hallowed or holy, be thy character. 
He says, holy be your character. Holy is your essence. That's what he says. Holy. He says, our source, let's put that together, which is in heaven, which is outside of any limitation I know of which means nothing that limits me ever touches him. Which is our source who is separate and dis- who, who is separated from any limitation, who can do and is able to do all things. Holy is your character. Holy is your essence. Holy is not just is not just something you can you you can brag about. Holy is who you are. This is what this is this is what Jesus is leading these disciples into. He says, "This is how in this manner approach approach the throne room of God with this understanding. He's 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 our sustainer. When you come to him, bring more than just your issues." That means allowing your heart now to be moved with the things that move his heart. Which means there should... I I remember talking with someone and and, and I'm I'm, I'm done. They're saying, Pastor, it's hard to, to pray for other people. I don't know. Just know the same things you struggle with, somebody else struggles with. The same things that you're having issues with, somebody else is having issues with. And when, when we allow God to give us, to, to, uh, to, to have his heart for, for, for hurting people, he makes your heart tender and you begin to, you begin to, he says, he says we, we don't have a high priest that can't be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He knows what it's like to be you. And when we petition, he says, I need you for a minute to assume the posture of somebody who's going through something. What would you want prayed for you? My heart broke with the news of that collapsed building in Florida. I've never been, ex- I've never experienced anything like that personally. But I could, God, be- I, could ass- I could begin to assume how that must feel for the parents, the loved ones, the family members of those who were trapped, lost, or died in that. And it began to break my heart. And that's where, that's how I could pray with empathy for the people, those people I had never met in my life. Never experienced that kind of tragedy, but, but their heart is like my heart. He says, our source. Who is big enough to deal with anything we go through. Holy is his character. You, when you petition, you're petitioning a holy God. You're petitioning a God who has a, who has a standard that makes him distinctive and makes him different from any and everything around him. And you have to respect. I'll say this and I'm done. When I say that respect, I don't, it's not a fear. Don't be afraid of it. But just know who you're talking to. Just know who you're talking to. Just be aware of who it is you are addressing in this moment. Father God in heaven, we love you and we just bless your name today. We thank you for the elements of this framework. You are our source. 
you're so big, you are outside of our known reality. My God. Which means you're not limited by the things that limit us. So you can do more than we could. Ah, thank you for your word. You can do more than we could ever ask, think, or imagine. Because you're not limited or confined to this reality. Holy is your character. We're recognizing more and more who it is we're coming in contact with. While we reverence you, you're not so holy that you can't come down where we are. You're not so holy that you can't touch us in our mess. That's what the blood is for. That's what the blood was for. We thank you that we can come before you in the posture of prayer with every care and concern that we have. Father, I pray for my brothers, my sisters who are joining us and watching us right now. I thank you for, prayer li- for their prayer life going to the next level. I thank you for their prayer life increasing more and more. I thank you for their understanding of prayer and its, and its necessity and worth. I thank you for it increasing more and more in Jesus' name. If you don't know who God is, if you've not accepted Christ, then that's where you need to start. We said it last week and we'll say it again that if you're not, we've said it, if you're not a citizen of the kingdom, if you're not a, and you can't make a petition in that government, but the prayer that God will hear from those who don't know him yet, is a prayer of repentance. Your prayer of repentance is your application into the country, is your visa into the country, your prayer of repentance. What am I repenting of? I'm repenting of my sin. Repent means to turn away from. As you turn away from your sin, you turn to the Savior. His name is Jesus. There's a video coming on right after I leave that's going to walk you through the steps of salvation. It's, it's got to come from you. No one can pray this prayer for you. You've got to make the acknowledgement yourself. This prayer, this, this petition, grants you at, brings you into the kingdom of God. And as you, be, as you know more about him and begin to learn what rights you have as a kingdom citizen, your prayers become powerful and effective. If you're not saved, get saved. And let us know you got saved. There may be somebody here, you don't have a church home, you don't know where, you don't have a place to call home. We're getting ready to open. Next month, we're getting ready to open. Should God, should God continue to say the same? We're getting ready to open. And you need a church home. If you don't have a place to call home, consider being a part of this fellowship. We're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but we serve a perfect God. And our desire is to honor him with our lives. Until next week, this is Pastor Rapper for the Upper Room Christian Cathedral saying we love you, but God loves you more. See you next time. Good morning, church. I've been given the opportunity to present to you today the too good to be true news of Jesus Christ. You know, the misconception about going to heaven is that a lot of people think that if I'm just a good person, then I get to go to heaven. But that's not true at all. The Bible teaches us that the wages of sin is death. And the only person 
who can counteract that wage is the blood of Jesus Christ. So if this is you, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you this opportunity to receive him right here, right now. If this is you, repeat after me. Say, Father, I confess I'm a sinner and my sins deserve death. But I believe Jesus, the Son of God, died for my sins. He rose three days later. I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart. Thank you, God, for saving me. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we believe you've been born again. If this is you, reach out to us, comment below. We want to talk with you and help you in these first initial steps of a brand new life in Christ. God bless you.